Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be covering a very important question. Now imagine in a scenario you've got 10,000 documents that you've just processed with a fairly computationally expensive pipeline. Maybe you're using a transformer pipeline and you, you don't want to redo all the work you've just done to create all of your doc containers after processing all your texts through a spacey pipeline and so you need a way to save that data outside of a Python script or a Jupyter Notebook so that you can load it up at a later date. Now in this scenario, you might need to keep that data with a bunch of other metadata associated with those documents. In this video, I'm going to cover two different ways that we can save our data, both within Spaces framework and also via Pandas. So let's go ahead and just jump right in by importing Spacey. We're also going to say import pandas as pd. If you're not familiar with pandas, don't worry about it. This is just a way that we can work with uh, tabular data inside of inside of Python. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to be working with the doc bin class from Spacey. Now the doc bin class is a way of serializing and storing your doc containers onto disk. Now remember, spacey doc containers are special objects. They're not just strings. They're objects that contain a lot of metadata about the document that it, uh, a pipeline has processed. And if you want to go through all the different documentation, you can look at all the different things that you can do with the doc bin class on the spacey doc um, uh, documentation under containers, but we're going to be working primarily with just the doc bin class and just importing it very, very simply in this video. So we can import it by saying from spacey.tokens import doc bin with a capital D and a capital B. And if we import all these or run the cell, we should import all the requisite libraries. Now the next thing that I'm going to be using in this video is a basic spacey pipeline. We're just going to be loading the NCore Web SM pipeline. If you haven't already downloaded this, you can do this by running spacey m download and then uh, NCore Web SM. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out for now because I've already downloaded this model. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to load up our data, which is going to be just four simple sentences. Now in a real scenario, you're probably going to have thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands. For now, for speed purposes and just for this demonstration, we're working with four separate small sentences that I just created on my own. We're going to load that up. These sentences are stored in this repository under docs.txt. And so docs.txt, we're just going to read in the text file as f. Uh, and we're going to say sentences is equal to f dot read, and then we're going to say dot split lines, which is going to allow us to automatically separate all of our lines in our file into a list of different strings. Now that we have our data, now comes the fun part of essentially creating our doc containers. So let's go ahead and create an object called docs, and I'm going to be a little verbose here. We're going to, instead of using list uh, comprehension, we're just going to go through and iterate over each of these sentences manually. So we're going to say for a sentence in sentences, we are going to then create a doc container here by passing each sentence through our NLP pipeline. And we're going to append each of those docs to our list outside of our loop. And as you can see, we now have all of our doc containers created. And we know that these are doc containers and not strings because we can see that we don't have the quotation marks around them as we do see up here. And just for good measure, we can use type and say, let's look at docs and we'll see that this is a special kind of uh, object. It's a spacey tokens doc container, which means that everything has worked correctly. Now in this scenario, we've just spent maybe seven hours processing all of our documents and now we need to save them to disk. Well, one of the things that we can use is we can use that doc bin class and actually go ahead and load up our documents into it one by one and then save them to disk so that we can load them up and look at them at a later date. So we can do this by creating an object called db. Zoom in just a little bit more. And then we're going to make this equal to doc bin. And we're not going to pass any arguments here. So once we've got this doc bin class loaded up, we can add documents to it by saying db.add. And we can add in each of the, our documents. So let's iterate over our documents for doc and docs. And we can add each of these docs to it. And then we can test to make sure that we've loaded everything up correctly. And we see that we've loaded up a total of four. 
and we can see that these are now serialized. Now, these can now be loaded down or saved to disk by doing db to disk, and we can load that data into a data subfolder, and let's just call this db. And everything is now saved to disk. Now, you might be familiar with this process because this is how you get Spacey2 training data or training data that maybe comes from Prodigy or some other annotation software into the serialized format expected by Spacey3. This is the same process, but we're doing this now to store our data outside for later uses, not for necessarily uh, training. So let's go ahead and test to make sure that our data has loaded up correctly. So I'm gonna make a new docbin class called new underscore db. Now at this stage, we can't just simply load up our data from disk. We can by saying from disk data db, but at this stage, we don't really have a way to access any of our data. We'll notice that if we try to access it, it's not, it's not subscriptable, which means we can't iterate over it. So how do we actually do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to load up the NLP vocab so that our, our environment here understands how to actually parse and work with this binary data. And if you don't know how to do that, then one of the things that you can do is you can use this notebook that I actually have available on GitHub to look down here and you'll see that we can use git docs and pass in nlp.vocab. Now it's important that your NLP object here be the exact same NLP object that you or pipeline that you use to create these docs when you pass in your uh, when you pass in your data and we can use in a uh, new underscore db dot get docs and we can pass in nlp dot vocab and we see now we have an actual generator so what can we do with this well one of the things that we can do is we can say for doc and new db print doc but we immediately get an error and we were finding out that it is not iterable why well because it's a generator so not necessarily best practice but one of the things that we can do is we can convert all this data into a list so let's call this our new docs and make that equal to the exact same thing as above but we're going to convert that generator into a actual list and then we can iterate over that data and we see that it is the exact same documents that we just serialized just a few moments ago. Now I should note that when you convert a generator into a list, you essentially lose all the efficiency and memory that lists provide. And if you're working with a large amount of data, this could run out of memory on your machine possibly, depending on how many documents you actually have here. So do use a little bit of caution, but if you're working with tens of thousands, this probably is not going to be too much of an issue depending on your machine. So this is one way that we can actually serialize our data using the docbin class. But in other scenarios, we might want to store that data not as a docbin, which can be a little difficult to actually access individual documents because of the way the data is stored to disk. We might want to store that data alongside other kinds of metadata. And in this scenario, we'd want to use something maybe like pandas. So let's go ahead and create a basic pandas data frame. Make this pd data frame and we're just going to load up an empty data frame you can see there's nothing there the first thing that i'm going to populate is a column called text which is going to be equal to our sentences now these are going to be the raw text that we actually have and if we look at that we'll see it all loaded up correctly these are all strings and i know that because i can access each one of them if i want it to and i can access that and see that it is in fact a string which is what we'd expect they were strings so let's say I wanted to load in those spacey doc containers now into that exact same data frame. Well, I could load up spacey underscore docs and I can make that equal to our new docs here. And we'll notice that we actually have our data loaded up correctly. And again, I can check the type by saying df spacey underscore docs, and I'll see that I do in fact have a spacey doc container, fantastic. Now, if I were to try to save this to disk as a CSV file, I'm gonna run into some problems. So let's go ahead and try to save it as a CSV file. I'm gonna call this bad.csv because this is not good practice, and I'm gonna set my index to false. And now everything looks like it worked okay, but let's load up that exact same data. We're gonna say read CSV, data, bad CSV, new DF, 
and everything again, it looks okay. However, if I were to go to type and I were to try to access this new DF dot spacey docs and I would try to grab the first one, we'll notice that it's just a string. Why is that? Well, when we saved it to the CSV, we lost all the benefits of our pandas or of our spacey dot container, which means we don't have access to all that metadata. In other words, we wasted our time by processing and creating all those dot containers. We haven't really done anything useful. We need a way to save that to disk and serialize it to disk while retaining all that information. What can we do? Well, we can use other alternatives in pandas to save our data. So the first one of these that we're going to look at is the uh, way of saving with pickle. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to just again go back to our original data frame here and we'll see that we do have the dot containers there. So we're going to say df.2 pickle and pickle in Python is a way of compressing your data down. Uh, think of it as zip or tar if you're familiar with uh, different compression methods. It's a way of just kind of compressing your data down and saving it to disk at the binary level. So we can use pickle then to say data, let's just call it pickle, and then we're going to save that to disk. I don't believe pickle takes an index. It does not. Fantastic. So we're going to save that to disk now, and then we're going to create new df2 which is going to be equal to pd.read pickle. And we're going to load up new df2 and check it out. And it looks good, but let's see if it actually passes our type test here. So we're going to say new df2 dot spacey docs. And we'll notice that it actually is saved correctly as our, as we would expect as our tokens file. So these are two different ways that you can actually save spacey data. They each have their advantages. If you're just trying to save your doc, contain, uh, your doc containers and not really associate them with any other metadata, then I would encourage you to use the doc bin class. It's going to make your file a lot smaller. It's going to be really efficient. It's got, it's built into spacey. Use it. It's there. Um, it's going to be very efficient. If, however, your doc containers need to go back and align with other data that might exist in a pandas data frame, for example, then use pickle in this scenario and make sure that it lines up with all of your data. This would be really useful, especially if you expect to add new documents to your data over time, or if you expect that your, your data frame is somehow going to be manipulated in some way, and you're worried that the data might get misarranged or mismatched. This is a good way to kind of keep track of your data with Spacey and Pandas kind of playing nicely together. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully now you have a good sense of how to actually serialize your Pandas data or your, your Spacey dot containers, when you might want to do that, and how you might go about it both with Spacey and also with Pandas. Thanks for listening, and as always, thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters. You all do help keep this channel alive. Everything that I make on this channel goes back into it. And a bit of good news, I have just ordered a MacBook so I can actually start providing some support on this channel for Mac users. In other words, I'm going to be testing a lot of these videos out now on Linux, Windows 10, and also MacBook Pro, and this will have an M2 chip in it. So again, thank you so much and have a great day.